Hey, what's up, YouTube? As of late, there have been some major accomplishments in the jailbreak community. First off, an iOS 11.3 jailbreak has been achieved. A new iOS 11.2 to 11.3 exploit is in the works, and a new bug bounty program has initiated by a third-party startup company offering a $3 million reward for iOS exploits. I'm going to discuss this and more in today's jailbreak update. So to start off, like I said, an iOS 11.3 jailbreak has been accomplished and was published on Sorry My Bad's Twitter account. The tweet says jailbreak on the latest iOS 11.3 and the bounty of Edge program. Feel lucky. Now this looks to be and has been confirmed by the community as a real jailbreak, but it has been submitted to Microsoft's bug bounty program, thus don't get your hopes up on a public release anytime soon. The developer of this jailbreak won't be able to publicly release this due to the non-disclosure agreement he signed with Microsoft. But in the end, it's incredible news we can gather from this that it is possible to jailbreak iOS 11.3 even with its heightened security. Now very quickly, before we get into the realm of publicly released exploits and such, I wanted to talk about Crowdfence. Now this is a startup company offering a total of $10 million in rewards, 3 million specifically for iOS jailbreak exploits. Now bug bounty programs have happened in the past, Zerodium being the first third party company that comes to mind. If you remember, they offered a $1 million reward for an iOS 9 jailbreak and a $1.5 million reward for an iOS 10 one. Now the startup company has upped the reward, offering a $3 million reward this year for iOS 11 related exploits. But with that being said, again, don't expect this jailbreak or these exploits to ever see the light of day. These startup companies are likely to sell said exploits to larger companies for even more than the $3 million being rewarded to the original developer. It's likely that government agencies could be involved in purchasing said exploits to gain information from iOS devices and or any company could use these exploits as spyware to monitor their employees in their company. There are just an endless amount of possibilities that said exploits could be used for, but in the end of the day, what we care about being a public iOS 11.3 jailbreak, that is not one thing I see coming from this. Regardless, there is a ton of heightened interest in hacking iOS now. And this program is much more lucrative than Apple's $200,000 bug bounty program or any other bug bounty program out there. So it's likely that new developers will be investigating what they know about iOS to potentially create new exploits. Anyway, regardless, it's still impressive news that $3 million is now being offered with a 10% bonus to the first party that offers a viable solution. Alright, so very lastly, as far as the bittersweet news goes, as of yesterday, Coolstar announced on his Twitter account that he will be leaving the jailbreak community, essentially. He notified everyone that due to the lack of tweak development on his iOS 11 Electra jailbreak, that he will be putting the project on hold and won't be releasing Electra version 1.1 in the foreseeable future. Now, he did have plans to update his Electra jailbreak to iOS 11.2 when the exploits became available, but for now, he said he will be taking a break. Okay, so with all that bittersweet news going on, what good has come out in the last few weeks regarding the future of jailbreaking? Now, I can't sit here and say that jailbreaking is the same as it once was a few years ago. The interest and the involved community is definitely taking a hit, but I still believe new jailbreaks will come out in the future for iOS. Just because Coolstar is heading out of the community for now, there are still other developers out there to take his place. This is a whole new wave of jailbreaking where it is entirely based on the do-it-yourself community and is not reliant upon a large security research team to release a full-fledged jailbreak. So that being said, it's just a matter of time before someone investigates all the new exploits that are coming out and all the new vulnerabilities that have been released. And when that time comes, we could very easily see another developer create another iOS 11 or even an iOS 12 jailbreak in the future. Okay, so on to the good news. Now, there have been quite a few new vulnerabilities found for iOS 11.2.x to iOS 11.3. So first up, as a quick update on Minzing's work, which I discussed in my last jailbreak update, he has now achieved full read and write privileges on the root of the iOS file system. Again, he may be talking about his work in an upcoming conference, so this may actually have some impact aside from it just existing for the jailbreak community here soon. 
Now in other news, a new iOS 11.2 to iOS 11.3 kernel vulnerability was discovered and talked about a ton here yesterday on the Jailbreak subreddit. And from what I've gathered from the community, it looks like this is a macOS kernel vulnerability that also exists on iOS 11.2 to iOS 11.3. Now the proof of concept project that was released here is actually for iOS 11.2.6, but the developer noted that it could be ported to iOS 11.3. Again, this is brand new information, so we have to wait and see what comes out of it as more people investigate its usefulness in the next few days to come. Now I will update you when I know more about this particular vulnerability. But as a reminder, there are some major exploits already in the pipeline waiting to be released. Now, Zimperium has already released an iOS 11.2 sandbox escape, which could be used to create something like Torngat or Houdini for iOS 11.2. Also, Derek has found a kernel level vulnerability for iOS 11.2.6 and below, which he actually plans to publicly release here in a few months once Apple approves it. And in fact, we could be seeing this sooner than we think, as technically this bug has already been patched in iOS 11.3, which has already been deployed to the public. Now, along with this, someone new I have yet to discuss in my videos, Brandon Azad has created an iOS 11.2.6 and below user space security research tool, which allows code to be run at the root level. Now, this could allow developers and security researchers to further investigate iOS security on iOS 11.2.6 and below to find even more vulnerabilities and ways to create exploits for iOS. So we'll have to wait and see exactly what comes out of this, hopefully something good. Lastly, I thought it was very interesting in the release notes of iOS 11.3.1, which was just released recently, Ian Beer has submitted a new vulnerability to Apple. So it'll be interesting to see if he releases a write-up about this in the future. Also, I thought it would be interesting to talk about if any of you have missed, Surik has recently commented on a Reddit post, nothing related to his work on his jailbreak, but it's good to see that he's still alive and well. Again, if you guys recall, as far as we know, he is planning on releasing his own iOS 11 jailbreak that he is working on with an undisclosed developer. But at the same time, he also stated that he was almost done over three months ago. And just until a few days ago, he was in complete radio silence, meaning we haven't heard anything from him at all, let alone news about his progress. Anyway guys, I know this was just a ton of information to cover in today's video, and I didn't have too much time today to get into great depth about most of it. I just wanted to update everyone what was going on in the world of jailbreaking, and as you guys can see, there was a lot. So concluding this video, where does this leave us now? By all means, if you're running iOS 11.2.x, absolutely stay there. Do not upgrade for any reason to iOS 11.3 or 11.3.1, if you're intending to jailbreak, that is. Even though there is a ton of stuff in the works for iOS 11.3, and as of today we saw it's now possible to jailbreak iOS 11.3, you still have much better chances of receiving a jailbreak on iOS 11.2.x, or iOS 10 for that matter. So definitely, again, do not upgrade for any reason to a newer version of iOS. That being said, if you're running an iOS 11.4 beta or iOS 11.3.1, I would highly suggest to downgrade to iOS 11.3, as that is the lowest possible firmware that you can still install, and that's still being signed by Apple as of recording this video. And I actually made a downgrade video on how to do this process a few days ago, and I'll link it in the description of this video. Anyway guys, stay tuned for more updates to come. Again, I will go in more depth on these topics as more information surfaces about them. Get ready for another iOS 11.4 beta, which is likely to come early next week. Again, only update to this if you don't intend to jailbreak or if you have a spare device and want to check out iOS 11.4 in its fullest. But in the end, thank you guys for watching today's video. If you liked it, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And if you want to stay updated on future jailbreak news, don't forget to subscribe. Anyway, guys, thanks again for watching. This is Tony signing out.